Good morning. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletin. It will also be up on the screen. I invite you to follow along with the bold print. The Lord be with you. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Jesus Christ is our life and our light. Let's join together in singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you this morning with praise and thanksgiving for who you are. You are wonderful. You are holy. All your works declare your praise. We thank you for this lovely space that we have to worship in. We thank you for the community that we live in, for the beauty of the blooming trees and flowers, all of these things which remind us of your handiwork, your creativity, your beauty. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Our prayer of confession is printed in the bulletin. It will also be up on the screen. I invite you to follow along as we pray this together. Awesome and compassionate God, 
You have loved us with unfailing, self-giving mercy, but we have not loved you. You constantly call us, but we do not listen. You ask us to love, but we walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We condone evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, as you come to us in mercy, we repent in spirit and in truth, admit our sin, and gratefully receive your forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Hear this good news. If we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sin. Let's believe the good news that in Jesus Christ we have been forgiven and we have been made new to walk in the light of life that he gives. Amen. So, there are lots of threes in this building. If you look at this stained glass window, the one here at the back behind the choir, at the very top, at the very top, is a flower, are flowers, there are three of them. If we move over to this stained glass window, the burning bush has three sets of flames. The pulpit fall, and you may not be able to see this from the back, the pulpit fall has three circles on it with the dove in the middle of it. And if you're on an end of a pew or can see the end of a pew, the seat part, like the, the lower part, there are three circles, concentric circles. And at the top, there's a middle circle and then two on the side. There are lots and lots of threes. Trinitarian, right? This is Trinity Sunday. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. It's a mystery, right? How is it possible? How does it work? As I said to the kids at nine o'clock, it'll take their entire lifetimes and then they won't even get it the mystery of the Trinity. And we think about this often as God, God the Father created, Jesus Christ the Son is the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is, is the Sustainer. All true. But that makes us think that it's somehow A, B, C in some kind of order, as opposed to recognizing that the three coexist again and again and again in Scripture. So in the moment of creation... The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, hovers over the formless deep. And God, the Father, speaks the Word. And suddenly we're in John 1, aren't we? In the beginning was the Word, and we quickly figure out that that's Jesus. So in the moment of creation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are present. In the moment of baptism... Jesus, the Son, is baptized. God, the Father, speaks from heaven. This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit in the form of a dove comes and rests on Jesus. Three and one, one and three. Again and again and again, we see that Trinitarian reality. Three persons in perfect relationship with one another. And to use the old Reformation formula, God is, the Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, but the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. So if you can get that diagram in your head, you've got it all together. It's subdiagramic form. It's a mystery. And it's a good thing that God is bigger than our brains, right? Because if we could understand God, then we'd be in a pile of trouble. We need someone, we need a person, a trinity, a God who is larger than us. And the trinity reminds us of that. Let's pray. God of grace, on this Trinity Sunday, we thank you that you are three in one, one in three. And that in that mystery we can rest and have hope. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sin became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you And none like you Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer 
awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? What could stand again? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? What could stand again? Before our scripture readings, let us pray. God of grace, open our ears to hear from you. Speak your truth that we might do it. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. From the first letter of John, chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things to you so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Here ends our scripture reading for this morning. We begin a series this morning that will take us through the first letter of John. I am convinced that the author of first John is also the author of the Gospel of John. There are too many similarities in style and structure and themes for them not to come from the same hand. The order in which they're written, I don't know. Which came first, I don't know, doesn't really matter. But clearly they are from the same hand. And John is writing in this first letter he wrote, we call it 1 John to distinguish it from 2 John and 3 John. And here's a complete sidelight that's not in the notes. If you've ever wondered about the way in which the letters of the New Testament are ordered, you take all the letters of Paul and put them in order by length, and that's the order. You take all the letters by people not by Paul and put them by length, and that's the order. Seriously. That's seriously the order in which we get the New Testament letters. So, 1 John is longer than 2nd and 3rd John, so it's 1st. John is writing to Christians who live in the Roman Empire. And we need a bit to know a bit about that background for what he's going on about, because in fact it sounds a whole lot like our time in many, many ways. The Roman Empire was a multicultural, pluralistic society. People of different races and backgrounds and ethnicities moved easily through the whole Mediterranean area, bringing their languages and religions to various parts of the empire. And it was easy to travel, easy to move about, and all of this travel often happened, and people brought their culture, their religion, their practices to the new places that they went to. And so, John is writing to a context where people, Christians, followers of Jesus, are living next door to people who believe other things from other parts of the empire of different backgrounds, different ethnicities. He's also writing to churches, followers of Jesus, gatherings of followers of Jesus, where people have been drawn from different cultures and different backgrounds, but who are in the church together from different cultural realities. The Romans basically didn't care what people believed. In many ways, they didn't care what people did, except for one primary thing. The emperor, the empire, was number one. As long as you recognize that the empire was number one, and the empire had all power, and you couldn't go against the empire, you were good. But anyone who challenged the empire was going to be in trouble. Sort of like Star Wars? So in this context of pluralism and multiculturalism, interculturalism, all of that reality, John writes. And he begins with a bold statement. He says, what we have seen and heard and touched is life, the life of God. What we have seen and heard and touched is the light come to our world. 
Because he wants people to know, he wants the Christians to know who this Jesus is that they follow. It's very interesting that John doesn't get to name Jesus until verse 3 of this chapter, even though he's talking about Jesus from the very beginning. Not because he's afraid to name Jesus, but because he's a good writer and is building suspense. Who is this that's being talked about? And John wants us to know two things about Jesus. That he was fully human. John saw him, heard him, touched him. Jesus was fully human. He was not an apparition. He was not a hologram. He was not a spirit. He was not some imagining. He was a real, live, flesh and blood human being. And we say to ourselves, well, yeah, we get that. But sometimes I wonder if we really do really get that Jesus was hungry at times and thirsty and so tired that at one point he slept through a storm and he told jokes and he laughed at jokes. Yeah, he was a real human being. I've heard preaching from Good Friday sermons where the preacher basically said the cross didn't hurt Jesus that much because he was divine. And I want to scream. He was fully human. But John doesn't leave us there. John is saying this one who he saw and heard and touched, this human Jesus was also God, fully divine, the life that gives light to the world, God among us, God incarnate in human form, fully human, fully divine, completely together meshed, one reality in perfect harmony, the two. Now the second part that he was fully divine, is harder for our culture to understand. Sounds a bit strange, odd to many who walk the streets of our communities. But John wants us to understand that Jesus was both fully human, fully divine, and that in that reality of him being both, there is fellowship offered to human beings with God, and with one another, with the other followers of Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ, the walls of ethnicity and culture and background, all of that comes tumbling down. The end of this last week, Thursday and then Friday and Saturday, I was at a conference in Ancaster. There were 75 of us in the room, A third of the room was under 40 years old. That doesn't include me. Those, for those whites for whom English was their first language, were a minority in the room. All in the room were followers of Jesus Christ, profoundly committed to his lordship profoundly committed to the fact that we have been drawn together across the lines of ethnicity and culture and background, across the lines that some of us were from the academy and some of us were from church agencies and some of us were from congregations and some of us from the workplace, across the places that we worked, across all of that, drawn together by this profound truth that for us, Jesus was Lord tearing down all those lines of division, that we might have fellowship with each other because of the fellowship we share in Jesus Christ with God the Father. So having led this, laid this foundation, John goes on to say, there is a critical matter we need to deal with, he says, essentially, to understand how this fellowship works. 
Because he says, if we say that we have fellowship with the Father, that we are walking in the light, but in fact our actions are not of the light, we are not in fellowship with God. That to be in fellowship with God is to live the Jesus way, is to live that pattern. Because for John, the truth is not just a series of statements. He's inviting us not just to believe certain things about Jesus and about God. He's in fact inviting us to do the truth. That when John talks about truth, it is about a set of actions, a way of being alive. Yes, it is about belief, but that belief impacts the way one lives if we are to walk in the light and to have fellowship with God the Father. And now we have a problem. Because we know in our heart of hearts that we don't always walk in the light. That sometimes our actions are in the way of the darkness. None of us is perfect. And to challenge what is thought about the church, the church is not made up of people who think they're perfect. The church is made up of people who know they're not perfect and need help. But John doesn't leave us just with this challenge that we are not walking in the light. He goes on to say that if we say we have not sinned, we turn God into a liar, but there is hope. That if we confess our sins, God is just and faithful and will forgive us our sins, washing us clean of all that is not righteous in our lives. That in Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to tell the truth about who we are. This is not a situation where we fake it that we're walking in the light. This is not a situation where we sweep all the problems under the carpet so no one can see them. Now, there's a context where we can tell the truth about who we are and what we have done. The ways that we have broken relationship with God, with other persons around us, with ourselves, and with creation. We have been promised in Jesus Christ that forgiveness is real as we confess our sins and bring them to God. A forgiveness that transforms and remakes us beyond our imagining. And then John says, from that place, we can have fellowship with the Father through Jesus Christ. This forgiveness that's offered to us is not a cheap forgiveness. This is not cheap grace. I have heard it said that Canadians say I'm sorry more often than any other nation in the world. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really care. But often when we say I'm sorry, it's very superficial. And the forgiveness that we give back to that is also equally superficial. The forgiveness that Jesus offers us is expensive forgiveness, deep forgiveness, profound forgiveness. His blood shed for us that we would be forgiven, cleansed, transformed, renewed. And in that place, we find hope and joy beyond ourselves and the ability to do the truth, to live the truth, to live the Jesus way. Now the teaser is this. 
In the first chapter, he's not give, John has not given us all that he means to say about what it means to do the truth, to live the truth. So you have to come back to get the rest of the story. But John here has laid a foundation that we would know these two things out of chapter 1. Who Jesus is, fully God, fully man, fully human, fully divine, blended in perfect harmony. And in that reality offers us the possibility of fellowship with God as we confess our sins and receive the forgiveness that Jesus offers us so that we might begin again on the road of following Jesus. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing a new hymn, but we're good at that. So I want to walk as a child of the light. Let us pray. God of grace, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the transformation he offers to us. That in him, being fully human, fully divine, there is a way for us to be in relationship with you. 
We thank you for that fellowship and for the fellowship we have with your followers of every tribe and language and ethnicity and culture. We say thank you. We rejoice that you've torn down the barriers of ethnicity and race, of economic background, to draw us together as one people in your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you as well for the forgiveness that is ours in your Son, Jesus, and that we can safely confess our sins knowing that forgiveness is offered. We thank you that we can come clean with you. We pray for our world. We pray about the, those impacted by the landslides in Papua New Guinea. We pray that aid would get in, give strength to those villagers who are seeking to dig out to find those who have been trapped. We thank you that trucks are getting in with food and supplies into Gaza today. And we pray that those ways would remain open so that food can get in. And Father, we pray about other places where there is violence in our world. Ukraine, Sudan, Myanmar. We pray that we as your followers would be signs of reconciliation and hope living into the fellowship that you want for us as your people. Remember those who are sick. We pray for those who grieve. Remember those who are stressed by life. We remember those who also who work, those whose jobs are difficult and dangerous, for those for whom their jobs are tedious and boring. We pray for those who find their work stressful, anxiety producing. Give to all these, we pray, your strength and hope. We thank you for the ways that they live their lives in service of others to your glory as they work. In this silence, we bring to you our thanksgivings and our requests, knowing that you hear us. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have some announcements to bring to your attention. You'll find them on the inserts in your bulletin, and we will begin with the colored inserts. So the orange insert walks us through the summer worship schedule, which begins next Sunday. So starting next Sunday, June the 2nd, and going all the way to include September the 1st, there'll be one worship service at 10 o'clock, and that gives you the order in which those services are taking place. On the yellow, in, so it's on a single sheet, it's bright, you can put it on your fridge so you don't lose it. The yellow sheet is about soul sisters, the six weeks of women gathering 
Um, and if you want more details, contact Caroline. The green insert outlines, or gives you highlights of the Youth Mission Coffee House fundraiser, which takes place on June the 14th. On June the 9th, two Sundays from now, the session will be ordaining and inducting five elders, John Agar, Annette Grassman, Jim Hall, Krista Hall, and Doug Walker. It'll be taking place at 10 o'clock service on June the 9th. Um, and so we celebrate them and invite you to be part of that service on the 9th of June. There's one other announcement I want to highlight, and it's called Your Input is Invited. The Presbyterian of Waterloo Wellington is doing is seeking ways to find to give support to congregations, and it's beginning by taking the temperature of congregations. And if you wish to fill out the survey, it's very simple, no names will be attached, it's anonymous. You can go to the link that's listed there, or you can call the church office and we can provide you with a hard copy that you can fill out and return to the office and we will load it on the website, on the survey site. Um, so you can fill it out. It's open to all who wish to fill it out. No pressure, but you're all invited. The one thing I would say about it is when you get to the first nine questions, don't think deeply. Don't analyze. Don't try to figure out the right answer. Just do the gut thing. What does your gut say is what you feel. So don't take three hours doing it. Take four minutes doing it. Okay, have I made my point? All right. Let's give to God, who's been so gracious to us, our tithes and offerings will now be received. God of grace, take these gifts that we return to you, that all the world might know of the forgiveness you offer. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in singing, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, because now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.